Alright, hello everyone, my name is Shep, welcome back to the Butcher Circus, and today we are going to be playing against none other than True Fro 68 so this is a new name, but you might know him as the one who knocks, so he participates quite a lot in the comments, so it's going to be quite fun to have this uh, sort of viewer game, right? So he's playing with his own team, it's this Goliath, well, not really a Goliath comp, but similar to a Goliath comp that he's running here, and we're gonna see what we can do about it. So I'm playing Chef Stress, you know, as you do. We're doing a best of three. I wanted to start off with something slightly familiar. And oh, that's a bad start for True Fro, but it's kind of the idea that I see behind this team is that all of his characters can sort of dance around and reposition the leper. So it looks like he's gonna be going for just that. If that expose applies a debuff, I'm going to be actually really screwed. Yes, it does. This means that I might want to consider a card. I only have the doggy to guard, but I am actually going to drop a guard here. Shep, what? Shep or doggy guarding in the butcher circus? What is this? Since when the shepherd guard? The reason I'm doing this is because I really, really, really want to bellow with my men at arms. I'm gonna bellow! I'm gonna do it. I want to reduce the lepers and the arbalist damage, just everyone's damage, really, with my insignia of rank and the pit fighter's helm. But if I bellow, my Hound's Harry will have zero accuracy, and against 55 and 65 dodge, the bell would be uh, the Hound's Harry here would be an absolute joke. So preventing a crit sniper shot just does me a lot of good here, which is exactly why I go for it. I'm not too worried about the Arbalus, but I am going to have to eat up this bell turn on the Leper anyway, so I was kind of hoping that Maybe I could wait with my Man at Arms turn for a bit, wait after the Revenge drops, and then have three turns of Bell Debuffs on the Leper, but I'm just gonna have to suck it up and do it this way. The Arbalus actually has snuff, so that's very interesting. It means she's not gonna get not gonna get disrupted that much, but you know, in this matchup she's not gonna get disrupted whatsoever. I'm considering where I, whether I actually go for a Punisher Reign of Stars here, because I'm going to miss the Shieldbreaker, 30 is a miss, and the Arbals might resist it, she has anti-stress here, so I'm thinking going for a Punish might actually be the best move. Like getting a bleed on this Slapper is going to be very nice, because he's, he has the revenge, and if the Arbals uses a turn to heal him, then, you know, it's not too bad, I'm still going to do stress, they're not being aggressive, they're not going on the offense, so I'd be quite happy with that. I'm going to de transform go for a pile here, potentially a miss play because they might puncture oh they can't puncture yeah if they puncture me the, the leper goes out of position so that early slam yeah that early slam has made this really difficult for true pro because in a situation like this he could puncture get rid of the guard and then i don't have any direct heals because there's a shep stress so i don't have to redeem available i don't have reclaims i just go full on aggro majority of the time this time i'm guarding with the doggy which still feels very weird it's not every day you see me guard with the doggy on the chef's stress number one. But yeah, usually you'd puncture the abomination here, then chop him down to zero. He's dazed and uh, he would be guard broken as well, so that would just be really, really nice. But unfortunately, True Throw doesn't have that, so he's having to go for Hughes. That Hugh could be could be meaningful, but for now we're gonna keep spamming the battles. Oh, come on, I have 112 accuracy and I'm missing both of them. That is so unfortunate. I'm applying the debuffs on who it really matters, but at the same time I want to apply the debuffs on everyone. I want to hit everyone with the balance. Not hitting those is actually really, really, really unfortunately. There is no justice in this world, but itty what itty. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have I have to say the line. I said the line, guys. I said the line. So what does the shieldbreaker want to do? Because if she uh, she does have captivate, she goes. In, oh, okay. Going exposed on my handmaster. They have uh, finale. It's nine to sixteen. There's a decent chance that they get it off. I could go for the lick wounds, but if I do that, <laughs> I just. Uh, the thing is, if I lick wounds here, they just shoot me and I'm in an even worse spot. So I don't particularly want to do that. I'm gonna go for Town's Ah, oh, I keep missing the Jester. At least I hit the Shieldbreaker though. So they're probably just going to sniper shot me here, but I'm not too worried because they can't actually kill my Hunt Master. Uh, they, if they go for the sniper shot on my doggy, they can't kill him with a Dirk Stab because if they try to hit him through the Abomination, they will actually bypass the guard and they will hit the Abomination instead and get repulsed. So that would be really nice for me. So they are going to shoot me. They do. Oh, this, this is actually quite bad for my opponent. Yeah, this could actually be kind of bad. This means that they could roll 9 on the finale, or a 10. 
they could roll a 9 or a 10 on a 9 to 16. They might not even go for the finale, but... I mean, if they go for the finale here, they're gonna miss out on their dodge, and then they're gonna have plus stress take, and they do, they, they do get a crit on it. So that's good for them, but look at their team, it's really kind of in shambles at the moment. I have another transformation coming, my abomination is fine, sort of, he's sort of fine, so I'm relatively happy in, the, in this situation. I've lost one hero, but I've dealt a very decent amount of stress. I really wish I had dealt a bit more to the Jester, he kind of dodged literally every single ability I threw his way, but... I, what did he, we should we should be fine even with this. Now the Shieldbreaker is going to reposition the Arbalest. I'm imagining that they just try to go hard and immediately kill my Abomination. That would be the move here. Just chop him and, and get and go for the 25. <laughs> In my opinion, that would be the move. But they do have minus 60% damage and they are hopeless. Did they go first? Yes, they went first. So they have minus 80% damage right now. And, you know, they're, they're hopeless. They move back with the hopeless. That means they're probably going to have the bull and, and the puncture and all that. They are going to go for the chop. They are going for the move. I would, at the very least. But yeah, they get either. Well, yeah, that's still a lot of freaking damage for minus 80%, but yeah, it doesn't work out amazingly for them. The same thing with my Flagellant's Reign of Sorrows. Fantastic. I I missed the Jester. I was expecting missing the Shieldbreaker, but the Jester? No, not so much. I want to get him afflicted in SAP because he's, he's taking extra stress, right? Now, uh, they shouldn't do 8 damage on that. The Melody will see our crippling. They could move back twice, which would be a bit annoying. Ah, oh, I might die if I transform. <laughs> uh, they shouldn't do enough damage, though. They shouldn't do 8 damage. Yeah, uh, the, the problem here is that they might go for a Captivate and do 8 damage to me, but I highly doubt that they'd be able to do enough, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. I need to decide on what I want to do here, and I'm actually going to go for a Rake. I want to do some decent damage to both these heroes, force them to go for heals rather than putting the, than putting the squeeze on me, essentially. She is going to go afflicted, she goes... Oh, oh, yeah. I was seeing it coming, I was like, she's, if she goes abused, she might actually do enough damage. Uh, oh, hits the Arbalest, that actually dazes the Arbalest, that, that could be huge. That, yeah, that could genuinely be huge. It could also be bad, because now they have two dazed heroes, and the more dazed heroes you have, the less it matters. But, oh, they surprisingly go for the Captivate on my men arms and get a crit. Okay, not, not the end of the world, though. This means that my Abomination's alive for, for the meantime. But they're probably going to do 8 damage for the Dirk Sam, unfortunately. Please don't. Oh. oh, just enough. Just enough to bring him down. I don't imagine 7 gets transformed to 8 because of the Revenge. The Revenge does make you take more damage, and that does happen with um, with the DOTs as well, but yeah, I don't imagine that will be the case right here. So they, can, they can't they can act with the Argyle, so they can't immediately shoot me. Uh, they will not do too much damage anyway. And yeah, the Bells are going to become like even more crippling now. They're already afflicted, they're going to get this or debuff soon. Uh, I would say minus damage from afflictions, but she went abusive. It means no dodge though, no dodge is pretty good. Yeah, I'd rather have this than Fearful, honestly. Yeah, it's honestly probably better for me. No dodge feels quite nice. Seeing the other characters doing lots of stress. It's good. It's good that we got this. She is going to DOT out as well, which is also fantastic. We didn't really drop too many Hound Zeris. Can you stop crit captivating me? I am not captivated by your shenanigans. I am really not appreciating this. I'm going to go for another battle, though. That is going to be enough to cause one affliction and almost another. Oh, thankfully they can't click to waste all the DOT, so I'm actually going to be able to go for the for the Reign of Sorrows here. Yeah, I don't want to I don't want to waste like 16 freaking horror. That is a lot of horror. I might go for a punish if they don't heal, though. If they don't heal, I could go for a punish here. They're going to go for the chop to get a crit for 27. Uh, a punish would be nice. My punish should be nice, but then again, I really need to get this chance out of the match. Oh, I miss an 85 on him now, and I failed to play it on the Arbos. What is going on with my Flagellant? He's doing horribly. He has Crimson Hook. He's missing 90s and 85s. He's doing so terribly. This Jester could already be dying. Yeah, he could actually be dying. He could be going to this store with the bleeds and be pretty much afflicted too. Thankfully I survived the 60s, so there is a bit of justice in this world. They can flare here to clear all the damage debuffs, but I feel like they're fine. 
but in the meantime, Captivate has absolutely destroyed my men at arms somehow. Not every day you say that about Captivate. My abomination sadly days, so I can't use him just yet, but I should be okay to use him sometime soon though. What I mean by that is that the Jester that they have is still dazed, so uh, they, maybe they should have flared, honestly. They probably should have flared. They could have flared and then immediately gone for the Dark Sap. Now they're gonna have to rely on the 55 rather than just going for like an 80% death blow death chance. So if they fail this 55, then, you know, I have to survive again! And then I can finally act at my Abomination, maybe not drop another heal. And if I get to drop another heal here, I'm doing very, very well. But yeah, I'd say it's... I'd say it's in my favor. Look at the amount of stress they have on them. They even have horror still. We're gonna go for another sniper shot. Sadly, the abomination is finally a goner. I could punish this slapper. I could also punish the jester, but I'd rather just go for oh, another rain of sorrows and miss. <laughs> Please, I need to stop missing. I need to stop missing now. I don't have reclaim. My men arms is gonna die like next turn. Yeah, he's, he's really, really close to being a goner. I need some act outs here. I need abusive to do a hell of a lot of stress. Come on. He... she does... okay, that's... that's decent. Serpent Sway... Serpent Sway doesn't really matter too much. I got the accuracy, I'll be fine. He's going to this door. He is hopeless. Does hopeless do something bad? Moves back! Okay, I'll take it. This means I can't Turk Snap for a minute. They're gonna, they're gonna do that. They have another big slam that they heal coming, potentially. Hits her? Okay, that's huge, actually. That's huge. That means she takes a hell of a lot of stress. She might actually be dying soon if I hit a crit rain of stars or something of the likes. They are probably gonna go for harvest. Please don't get to bleed. Please don't get to bleed. Come on. Yes! They don't get to bleed. This means that I can drop yet another bell. If this hits the shield breaker, she's so screwed. Ah, I keep missing all the important moves. It sucks so much. How I miss every single important move. Like, how is it possible that I miss all the bellows when... I, I mean, I'm, I'm hitting the other ones, but you need to keep in mind that I have Insignia of Rank and Pit Fighter's Helm. I have the Bellowbot setup. This is as Bellowbot as it gets. And he's doing really well, honestly. Like, he's doing exactly what he was supposed to do. He was reducing damage, you know, just doing his thing. Oh, do not hit my flagellant. That, that would be the worst mistake you've ever done. If you hit my flagellant here and, and make him go down to, like, enough HP that he's... Uh, how do I put it? That he uses Redeem, then you've lost the match already. I'm gonna go for Reign of Sorrows. Finally! Finally some good hits. That means at least two kills. It might even be three, though. Yeah. Drew throws symbols like, on the on the brink of collapse. That's four heart attacks. They're falling like dominoes. This Leper might even die here. Yeah, he's dead. Four kills from one Reign of Sorrows. GG's for the one who knocks. And let's go for match number two. Alright, and here we go, straight into a match number two. Looks like the one who knocks is going to be playing the exact same team, so this is the team that he's built. He probably wants to do some testing with it, play it against me and all that. He asked me what I would have done differently, and I told him, well, you should have resisted the slam. <laughs> he has Snuff on the Leper. He has the immovable le Leper setup, and uh, yeah, you know. Immovable Leopard things, I guess. So right now I'm playing with the Sergi squad. Very cool, very neat team, and I have to make some decisions. I am immediately thinking of Transform slamming the Slapper again. Like, it's a very, 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 very small chance of success. But if it did work, it would have been quite nice. But uh, anyway, it's also doing a lot of stress on my opponent's side. Which is good. The horror here might be our win condition. We might get some afflictions going. We might want to win through damage as well, but there's just a lot of dodge between the shield breaker and the chaser, so I don't feel too confident uh, dropping stuns on anyone. I mean, look at this. He has good stun resistance, she has dodge, he has dodge. So it doesn't really feel too good for me, but I have to reclaim, so I have a lot of defense on my side so that's exactly what i'm going to be going for i'm going to be going for the defense and see just how that works out for me i don't particularly want to use my crusader turn just yet so i might go for my arbalist turn first i might shoot the enemy arbalist but I, I can't follow up on it that's kind of the only problem if i shoot the arbalist i don't have a i don't have a freaking follow-up which feels really odd 
But you know what I'm actually gonna do here? Oh, th this is gonna look so bad. Sergi is gonna grill me for this, but I'm going to drop her a claim on the A bomb and I'm going to heal my flat. <laughs> this is so passive. This is really not how you should play Butcher Circus, but I think I might be doing that. Yeah. So he's going to revenge, which is quite good. This means I'm, I'm getting to drop a Zealous on there. Probably do a hell of a lot of damage too. So I'm gonna go for that first. Oh, I hit! I hit the shield breaker as well. Look at that damage. Good. He's already at pretty much half HP, which we take. Definitely take those. He might be going for preemptive healing here. I think with the medic's full plate snuff setup, that would be the move. Uh, if they're shooting my flash on then, you know, I might as well. Uh, I might as well. I will lose the redeem availability, but I don't really need it at the moment. Honestly, I don't really need it. I have the regen on my abomination already. Crusader's tanky enough to survive like a crit chop. So I should be fine in the meantime. They don't have Finale available right now. They do have Exposed to go for the Finale, but, you know, it's not a right now, so I, I don't really care all that much. I think I will just drop another Zealous. We get a nice juicy crit on that Leopard. He's almost going Afflicted too. He's almost at this door. Revenge is really kind of a crippling debuff. Plus 15% damage taken doesn't look like a lot. Especially when you think like, oh yes, 10 brought and the most max HP in the game, but it is a lot. It is definitely a lot. You're gonna be dropping that, and now I have a bit of a decision to make, because I can manacle the Jester, and it's an 80% chance to, to hit, right? If it fails, I get finale though, so... It's, it's a bit tricky, so I'd rather not give myself a 20% chance to lose the match, so... I'm just gonna do this. And I'm still gonna have the regen on there, and so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave it at that. I think this is fine. I think this is fine. If they go if they get a crit chop here on my abomination, then you know so be it. I'm going to regen if then if they want the kill, it's gonna have to be through finale. They're going to deal 26 damage, which is a fair bit. I could detransform mana calls, but I'm unsure whether it will do enough damage. I do have spiked chain, so probably honestly, probably enough damage. Yeah, probably enough damage. The stun chance is quite small. I would daze myself, but I could flare because I have two dazes. I could do that. It does 6 to 10 damage. Ah, it does 6, and it fails the stun too. How unfortunate is that, though? How unfortunate is that? 6 to 10. You know, such is the way of the Witcher Circus. They might just Dirk stab me here and try to go for a finale in my abomination, but then you have to think, if you get a kill without finale here, are you gonna, how are you gonna deal with the Flagellant and the other guys? Because the Leopard's going away soon. Like, one more Zealous and he's pretty much a goner. So that feels, uh, that does feel quite good for me. I can shoot the Leopard now, actually. I could shoot the Leopard, I could just flare, but I do not get to go first, which is unfortunate. Yeah, I do not get to go first. I feel like this is kind of a waste shooting the leper though. I could just drop a heal here to prevent the immediate finale. If I flare, I get finale for sure. Alright, not let's shoot. It's fine, we're gonna drop a zealous on there. We're gonna drop a zealous on there if they want to drop a finale on my abomination. The problem is that if I heal here, then they get to just freely heal. And it won't be too good for me. They're actually gonna go for Solemnity. I'm going to stun the Jester in that case. Yeah, I am going to stun the Jester. I'm a bit preoccupied about him. They're going to flare it, unfortunately. But that's okay. It will buy me some time and it does some damage to him as well. If they don't flare it, it would be really weird. Because then they're gonna allow me to regen, they're gonna allow me to transform again. That's what lost them the match the last time, so I imagine they're going to flare. Yeah, there they go. Do I have enough time to survive here? If I heal, here's the thing, if I heal, I go up to 20 HP, which is not enough to kill the finale, unless they get a crit. So if they go for the crit finale, they can kill me. If they go for the expose, then I have two dazes, so I can freely click the abomination, regen, and then transform again, or go for another stun, you know, do whatever I want. But probably transform and, again and, like slam the, the leper, <laughs> go for another 10%, and also do some decent damage onto him. I might rage though, raging might be a better move here. Is are gonna go captivate on my flagel? What? Since when does captivate do 13 damage on a crit, excuse me? It's okay, they don't have enough to finale me, I have the, the crown of thorns, so I don't really care. I'm going to transform, and I'm going to probably rage this sniper. 15 to 26, yeah, he's at this door. Okay, Leper at the store, that feels quite good. I'm probably just going to drop another redeem. Yeah, I think that, that would be that would be quite uh, uh, 
the idea for me here. I will go up to 15 HP, which is probably finaleable if they drop a Dirk Sav on me. If Even if they drop a Dirk Sav, I will probably have more than 15 HP. Yeah, I'll probably have a bit more. Unless they get a crit on it. No, they're just going to Dirk Sav my Abomination. This means that my Flagellant is dead, essentially. But it would have to be through a finale. What do I think happens here if they finale? Because here's the thing, if they finale, my abomination heals, I go for Zealous's... Oh, it doesn't feel too good. I don't think it feels that good if they finale me. I'm going to drop another Redeem. Yeah, screw it, I'm going to drop another Redeem. I'm going to go up in HP to 26, the abomination is going to go to full HP. So be it. If you want to finale that, then... Well, now you can't, obviously. They're probably going to drop another Solemnity, but... Yeah, they're eating a lot of stress for it, so they are going to go afflicted sometime soon. Uh, sadly, not enough to go afflict it just yet. I could sniper shot that. I kind of don't want to waste a sniper shot turn, that's the problem. Well, I'm going to heal for a bit and I'm going to stun the Chester instead. I have very good hit chances on him with my Regis Cloak and the base accuracy of Manacles. So let's do it. Some more chip damage going on to him. A lot of horror on the entirety of the enemy team, so they're, they're gonna go afflicted. I'm, gonna, I'm going to have the affliction value going against their side, so I'm kind of just playing the reclaimed flagellant here and it's working out pretty well this is kind of what you can do if they pull your abomination they're going to get another crit for 13 <laughs> which fine okay okay sure i guess another crit for 13 such is the way of the butcher circus i'm just going to shoot this leper i get the crit too but my crit gets harder no freaking way it goes to 99. oh that is gonna be the saddest zealous of all time uh, yeah, literally the saddest zealous of all time. If they heal him... Oh, I'm not sure that's a good move. I'm not sure that's a good move. That's just... Yeah, that's really not doing anything for them. I, I guess it saves him for a bit, but... Now they're afflicted, and the Jester's taking even more damage, so... I mean, my team is very good against damage teams, so I do have to give it that. It is, it is very difficult to win in a situation like this. I kind of want to move forward, but at the same time, I kind of don't. <laughs> I'm in a weird spot here with the, with the Flagellant. I want to move forward, but if I move forward, then I can't sell, so it feels really bad. And then my corpse will be in position 1, which is even worse, honestly. Ah, but it would dissuade the Leper from going aggressive. But the Leper is dead. The Leper is dead soon. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to drop another claim. Yeah, it's okay. If they hit him down to zero, I can heal with the other heroes, or I could just move him back. <laughs> that might just be the move. If they try to shoot him or something of the likes. If they try to heal the leper again, I will just drop a zealous on there, and then that's gonna be an afflicted jester. At this door, leper getting even more stressed out. Yeah, I, I've kind of just made this leper's life just really not ideal. To say the very least. Looks like they're gonna drop the finale on the flash one in position three that has practically nothing left. So, you know, I, I really don't mind it. I'm going to still have an, another acclaim on my abomination too, so it feels quite nice. I'm gonna drop this. Sadly I missed the shield breaker, but the stress is good. I do have the rate of execution for death for that death of the old chance. It is the weakness of this team. It is the, the fact that you don't have a good death blow character. The best thing you have is freaking grid of execution. The way you, you play around it is by going for moves that just have lots of value regardless. So the, the Zealous Accusation is going for death blows, but at the same time it's also bringing other characters up in stress. It's hitting two heroes at the same time. So it's not just kind of a wasted tempo even if you even if you fail the death blow. Enemy GS is going abusive, so any dodge he had is now completely gone, but he does get more damage from it. I could go for a 25, start the next round, I probably will. I've already used both transforms. They are abusive, so, <laughs> so they could uh, they could hurt me a pretty fair bit here. I'm going to stun the Arbalus most likely, but she does have snuff, she can resist it. They're going to chop my A-bomb, 25, yeah, that's kind of what I was worried about. Uh, they have less stun resistance here. I could... Uh, stunning the Arbalus. She's not really the biggest threat at the moment, is she? I don't think so. I think the Leper is the biggest threat. Let's get rid of this turn. Unfortunately, it doesn't work, but they're going to use the, the Shield Breaker. Then I'm going to go for Zealous, and he's, he's probably just dead from the Zealous, and that's quite good. I'll still have 12 points of regen on my A-bomb. It's just that the, the Arbalus can flare the stun, right? That is true. She can flare the stun. The freaking Captivate's actually working. 
How is it hitting, is my question. How the hell is it hitting? I'm dazed! I'm dazed because it freaking captivates! Oh, the lack of justice. Uh, that is that is actually so annoying that I'm that I'm dazed. Okay, I'm just going to shoot the jester. It fails. Right, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I want to not use my abomination turn to go for like a manacles here because then I, I'd miss out on the region. And after that, they could like heal the leper, then chop me down to zero, and then the dirk sap just kills me or something of the like. So that would be really bad. That's going to stress everyone out. Good. Shieldbreaker is going to be afflicted next turn. They're going to go for the hue here. It's not enough to bring me to zero. I'm still at 9 HP. 9 HP is a decent amount. I want to stun the Arbalest. Yeah, let's stun the Arbalest. It's a very good chance of getting stunned. There we go. No more Arbalest turn for you. At least in the meantime. I'm going to drop a Zealous the very next turn. The Leper should be dead. Even from the stress, he should be dead. Fearful for the pulse dodge. I'm never gonna hit this shield breaker. She passes though, she passes. Oh, that is awesome. That is awesome that she gets to pass. But it, it is time to drop the zealouses. I hit a 38% hit chance. He's dead to the horror. The horror. The arbalist, you know. It, lots of passes on my opponent's team, but they basically didn't get to play this one. Uh, this this round, so extra stress from the abusive. They probably deal enough damage to bring me down to zero. Yeah, because of the abusive. They are Death Star debuffed, but abusive is fair and balanced. 199 stress on that freaking leper, by the way. 199. I'm going to click and I'm going to manacle the dresser. So no more jester. It is now a 3v3. The kill makes the leper have a heart attack. The leper dying makes these two take even more stress. So now the Arbos is almost inflicted too. She passes again. God, going for the transform play, just it, it worked out. It worked out really well. I'm just going to shoot the enemy Arbalist here and I'm going to keep my Crusader turn for healing because uh, yeah, 60 dodge, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go into it. I don't think that would be the wisest move I have ever done. Uh, it's a 50-50. You just said you wouldn't go into it, Shep. Yeah, but I don't need to heal at the moment. Yeah, okay, what I said anyway. I'm I'm just going to, to heal after they hit me because I have two healers while they only have two attacking characters. So I should be perfectly fine here. I'm gonna go for manacles too. I should give it a shield break return soon. They can't hit my A bomb if they go for that, so I don't really mind it all that much. But I'm probably just going to drop an absolution. I don't wanna go I'll go afflicted here and all that. I could also just heal him and go for the manacles. Yeah, really not too much to worry about. I'm going to shoot the Arbalest. Yeah, 1 HP. 1 HP. So freaking close. If I take this match, I take the best of 3, so I'm definitely going for the win. I am doing my damn hardest to, to get to win here. If you can take a W earlier in the best of 3, you should, because then you're going to lose out on the tempo if you don't do it. So, for example, you know the, the best of 10s that I've played? I've had best of 10s that are like really freaking close, and I've had best of 10s that are absolute sweeps. The reason for it is because there is tempo in the Butcher Circus, not just as you're playing the match and, you know, uh, you kill an enemy hero so now you have more turns than they do or, or whatever. It's tempo as in player tempo. If you're on the advantage, you shouldn't get over overconfident, right? But you will naturally win more matches after the first one if you have the advantage. It just seems to happen that way. It's something about the other player just feeling weakened in, in some sense. It doesn't really make too much sense, but it does it does work like that. Even if you have that tournament discipline and even if you no, not to let it get to you. It will still get to you. The fact that you're losing matches, the fact that you're down something, it will get to you. And then when you're up, you need to push your you need to push your advantage, right? So if you are playing and even if you are four and zero in the best of five, you can you cannot be overconfident and be like, Oh, I can play this match more chill. I I'm I still have like another five matches, it's perfectly fine. Nah, you need to go for the win always. Don't give your opponent even a second of breathing room. That's how the Butcher Circus is played. You need to corner them, make them feel hopeless in all senses. Just how just how the one who knocks is feeling here. <laughs> he passes with the Arbalist. He does that to get the abusive, so he actually does more damage. So he can kill my Arbalist the next turn. <laughs> And he surrenders, so GG's to the one who knocks. And honestly, I'll have to say, 
I kind of just play teams that counter him. Yeah, my teams kind of just counter him. I, I wouldn't think the Shep Strength would counter him. The reason that went so poorly for him was because I just managed to transform twice because I got to push on the Leper. So the push on the Leper made it impossible. In this matchup, they could chop my Flagellant down to zero and kill him after a big heal, but they conveniently put him in position three where he can't be hit by the Leper. So I just was free to drop her claims, transform twice, you know, cause a lot of zealous induced madness and just take the W that way. But anyway, hope you all enjoyed today's video and I'll see you again another time. Cheers!